What is up, all you rebel scum and imperial guards? Jake Berlin here, aka Qui Gon Jake, with the Padawan Podcast for Apocalypse Movies, and I am joined today by Brian Avalasino. Uh, we have yet to come up with a name for you. A we Star still Wars have it. name. It's we been still a, it's have been a while. It. We really haven't delved and There's not, dived into it. I need you know? a good one. It, I'd rather <clears throat> wait and pick a good one. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do some research and and a number of characters. That have to be a popular character, just a character to kind of find well, something. for I think you. Uh, Jacob took the one I wanted. Yeah, Grand Moff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good one for him, and he's had it for a while. But we'll figure out something here pretty soon. Um, yeah, the Padawan Podcast, uh, Apocalypse Movies, all Star Wars podcasts. We try and break down everything from the galaxy far, far away. That includes movies. TV, comics, all of the canon novels, and much, much more in the in the universe of Star Wars. Uh, we are here today to actually rank the Star Wars franchise. There's not a whole lot of movie news going on, um, not a whole lot of canon releases, a few comic issues that will probably be coming over the next few weeks or so, but we felt like it was a good idea now that The Last Jedi is out, Han Solo is upon us in just a few months, uh, to rank the nine films that are currently out. Um, that includes all, um, you have the eight Saga films and Rogue One. We're going to be doing all nine. Uh, the way we're going to do it, we're going to rank our nine through six, uh, talk a little bit about each one as we kind of re- uh, reveal them, then go five through three, and then two and one. Uh, we put two and one together because you're, you're going to know number one as soon as we say number two. So it's it, it's... Uh, it seems smart to put them together. Um, we're going to get right into this because there's a lot of Star Wars stuff to talk Let's about, obviously. Let's do it. Um, I'll go ahead and start this off. And so uh, my 9 through 6, starting off at number 9, uh, I don't think it comes to much surprise uh, for many, uh, but I have Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, you know, um, okay. And uh, it, it, was, it was hard putting this at number 9 because my number 8, it can easily go back and forth. Um, <clears throat> and even though Mole is in this one, you have Qui Gon, which you know obviously I'm named after. Um, it was still just you know you have young Anakin. It didn't feel like a Star Wars movie. Jar Jar was too much in in the fold in yeah. this one. Um, the way they kind of handled Natalie Portman in this one and Jar Jar's home world was kind of just a little wa- wonky in my opinion. Um, I still love watching all these Star Wars movies, but it's definitely the the least favorite of mine out of the bunch uh and number eight i have episode two attack of the clones and um the main reason on this one is because the anakin and padme love story should never take as much center um as it does in this movie fair enough um there are a number of good things in this movie that i i really really enjoy but there are too many bad things that overcome it um again still very enjoyable um, <clears throat> I love the 10 year time gap it took from the Phantom Menace. The Obi-Wan stuff is fantastic. Oh, yeah. The Geonosian, uh, battle sequence. Awesome. The, the army of Jedi, the first time we've ever seen that many lightsabers on screen together. Amazing. Um, absolutely phenomenal. The Jango Fett stuff was really cool as well. Uh, but again, the Padme Anakin love story was just too much of a bashing for me to, to put any higher. Uh, number seven, this is going to come to a surprise you, Brian. Um, but Return of the Jedi, I have number seven. Uh, this is, I, I've been battling this one for a while, but, um, there's a lot of things that, that I really love about this movie. The Luke and Vader stuff is great. Uh, we finally get to see the Emperor in in complete fashion in this one. Um, you know, you see, you get full Lando, you get Mon Mothman, you get Admiral Ackbar, you get all this cool stuff in this movie. But at the same time, I also felt that one... The Ewoks, obviously, just a little bit of a little kitty in a way. Yeah, and um, but I also felt like Han and Leia, they weren't really given a whole lot to do in this movie. They were kind of, you know, they first they were held captive by the Ewoks, and then they went to the base of the Empire on Endor, and cool, they captured it. But what else did they really do? They kind of stood around a lot. There wasn't a whole lot to do, Um, and the whole Ewoks for Stormtrooper battle thing was just kind of like. Man, what are we really getting into this t- territory Such of Star Wars? I know, I know, but you know, I do love all these movies anyway. Um, and then number six, uh, episode three, v- Revenge of the Sith. Uh, I, this is where I begin to really, really love Star Wars. I okay. think this is one of the better Star Wars movies. It is a prequel. Yes, there are a lot of bad things done in the prequels, but this movie is incredibly enjoyable. Um, it arguably, at this moment in time, it arguably has my all-time favorite lightsabers uh, duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin. Absolutely phenomenal. I can quote that entire scene. Um, 
as well as you counter that with the uh, Yoda Palpatine stuff that was going on as well. All right. um, obviously, the reveal of Vader and Anakin, the turn, um, Order 66, the clones, and all that good stuff. There's some really cool action. Uh, the emotional tie that is in this film, not just with Anakin, not just with Obi-Wan, but you have the Padme stuff, obviously her passing. You see Luke and Leia, how they're born. Um, Yoda and Obi-Wan going into the distance. You get a, a, an idea of how the Force Ghost history is kind of established in this one. There's so many yeah. cool elements that go into the Star Wars There's lore. a lot going on. There is, and so... Um, but it is definitely the best prequel, in my opinion. There's so many cool things. That's where, really, where we really get into the... The, the realness of Star Wars is with Episode 3. So number 9, Episode 1, 8, Episode 2, 7, Return of the Jedi, and 6, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. What do you got, Brian? All right. So <clears throat> I'm not actually far off on you. All right. Okay. Um, this, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for. Oh, man. Uh, my least favorite is actually Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. No! I am not and have <clears throat> never really been a fan of that movie. Now, what is the reason why? Uh, it's just too all over the place Yeah, for me. it's kind of scattered. It's so scattered, and there's a lot of just nothing going on, mm-hmm. really. A lot of just talking. Everything on the ground was kind of yeah. boring. Everything in the space was really cool. Once they hit Endor, I was just kind of like... Mm-hmm. Like, and I've I mean, noticed that as I got older. Yeah, like, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love the Endor fight scenes, like, them fighting in space. Mm-hmm. And it's a trap and mm-hmm. all that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, it's just it's just one of those movies I just, I'm always like, if it's on, I'm just like, no, uh, eh, maybe. Interesting. Okay. So that's my least favorite. Um, I actually also have, uh, for the next one, The Clone War, uh, er, excuse me, Attack of the Clones. Uh, episode two, um, I honestly <clears throat> feel like that movie, I don't know off the top of my head the exact length of it, but Long. the whole entire movie up until the last 20 minutes, you could sleep through and cause yeah. the only thing you really want to see at the end is the lightsaber duels. Mm-hmm. I've literally mm-hmm. watched that movie just for the end of that part mm-hmm. because it, it provides one of the most epic lightsaber lightsaber not battles guess, battle if you will the count um, dooku stuff as well oh is really yeah cool. count dooku um i mean there are some enjoyable things like uh when they're uh, when you got obi-wan facing off against Django. yeah um on camino you know love love that scene other than that i've got nothing really for that one um my next one is actually episode one the phantom menace um Actually went back and forth with my seven and six, um, but I had to just commit. Um, I don't hate it as much as everyone else does, um, or I mean, obviously we all seem to mutually hate Jar Jar Binks for <laughs> for for the most part. Um, I remember growing up loved him, but now I just roll my eyes every single time. It's he's even worse in the Clone War animated yeah, series. Yeah, oh my bad. god, he's bad. Um, but you know, it's it's a little bit underrated for me. I love me some Darth Maul at the end of the movie. Love me Qui Gon. Um, uh, and when they go underwater for the first time to um, his home world. Point? I forget. I forget Charger his home world's Binks's, name. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Um, <clears throat> just Naboo in general. Um, the Gungans, all that stuff. Uh, Gungan City, I think, is not the I name of it. it is, yeah, it's Gungan pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> That's actually just the most basic name. Um, but I do like that. Love the fight scene in space at the end. Um, overall, though, like you said, the Anakin and Padme thing. I mean, he's a little kid. Whatever. Pod racers love pod racers. You know what? Uh, I for, I completely forgot about pod racing. I'm switching my nine and eight. See, okay. I'm switching. Episode one is definitely better than episode that's, two. There's a lot. I think. <clears throat> Honestly, the shadow of Jar Jar Binks is so large yes. over that movie yeah. that it just cancels out a lot of people's yeah. image of it. Um, and then my sixth one is actually Revenge of the Sith. So you and I had all four of the same movies we just did. all over the place. Makes a little different. Yeah. Um, but Revenge of the Sith, you get to see the transformation of Darth Vader, uh, or Anakin to Darth Vader. It's just such a dark movie. I mean, you get... Arguably one of the best lightsaber scenes in Obi Wan and Anakin. The move that 
scene goes on for... It's like a 10 or 15 minute scene. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's it's, it's amazing scene. Um, I love how the movie opens... Where the, oh, what's one of the greatest opening scenes oh, in Star yeah. Wars history? Oh, easily. above Coruscant, yeah, so good. Oh, um, because I'm a sucker for some starfighters and especially all Jedi that. starfighters. Oh yeah, man. you can't go wrong. And I mean, it gave me General Grievous, who I absolutely love. Um, yeah, I mean, I pretty much you and I have the same same set of movies and pretty much the same reasons so yes. this is where i'm interested to see where you and i differ now so I'll let yeah you... it's gonna be interesting so uh five through three i'm gonna start off with number five and five through three is actually probably where i had the toughest time rearranging okay. them um number five i have rogue one okay and i it was it could have easily been my number three it could have been easily easily been my number four um but i feel comfortable at number five it is a fantastic star wars movie it is by far the most different star wars movie out of the bunch because it has basically no force stuff mm -hmm. there's about yeah maybe two minutes of force stuff and it's just vader scenes oh yeah the entire movie everything else it's focusing on is grounded it's real characters um what gareth edwards was able to do with all of these brand new characters kind of bring them together for such an important cause the idea of it focusing on a task that was first introduced in 1977 with the first lines from one of the greatest characters in Darth Vader mm -hmm. is so cool. Like how they were able to create an over two hour movie on just that one sentence. Um, I will always give praise to it. Felicity Jones, a junior or so, uh, will go down in history as one of the greatest Star Wars characters. She is phenomenal. The entire band of rebels that you just, um, that you see perish along this way. Kia 2 so you have Diego Lona, um, Cassie and Andor, you got, Bays and uh, Chiwet, um, Chiwet or Irit Chiwet, Ch Chiwet. I, you can have the name in front of me. I yeah, still can't I, say it. Seriously, right. uh, but and then you have a little bit of Saw Guerrero in there. You got Krennic played by Don, or Ben Mendelsohn. Um, there's so many cool elements in this. The action is phenomenal. The the planet of Scarif, the kind of building and building on the Star Wars history is is great. Um, so yeah, number five, I have Rogue One. Number four. I have The Force Awakens. Okay. Um, I wholeheartedly love this film. Okay. Um, there are so many good elements. Obviously, the introduction of Rey, Kylo Ren, Finn, Poe, the First Order, the Resistance, the bringing back of Han and Leia, um, the kind of myth of Luke Skywalker and everything going on, Phasma, Starkiller Base, there's, you know, BB-8. There's so many cool things in this film. It did J.J. Abrams, you know... After um, after the prequels, everyone was kind of just bored of Star Wars and didn't really want to mm -hmm. see anymore. We never it's really too thought, political. yeah, we never really thought we would ever see one again. And then J.J. Abrams, he came in, he had a huge task above him, and he absolutely Nailed crushed it. it. Um, this film, it is it kickstarted what Star Wars is now, and we we obviously see what it is now, and it's just I could watch this movie over and over again, have it on on replay, and can just continue to enjoy it for what it is and all of it does. And then obviously it leads into my number three. Um, that is the last Jedi. Okay. Uh, it is the most recent star Wars film the sequel to the force awakens. But, um, this film, man, it, it breaks the boundaries of star Wars. It is, um, there's so many, you know, rule breakers in here as far as the force and what the force order can do in, um, all of these beings like Snoke, and then you have the legend of Luke Skywalker coming alive, and um, the empowerment and rising of Rey and who she is, and the darkness and fall of Kylo Ren, and um, the coming out of you know the Resistance and trying to figure out what it's going to do moving forward after its destruction by the First Order, and all of these things it features. It's so phenomenal. Um, I will forever give praise to Ryan Johnson for the risk he took. Mm -hmm. um, it will go down as one of the greatest Star Wars movies ever. I can't wait to go watch it a few more times. But yeah, it ranks in at number three. So five, I have Rogue One. Four, The Force Awakens. And three, The Last Jedi. The three most recent Star Wars movies. Okay. Um, you and I both <clears throat> have the same number five. I have Rogue <laughs> right. One also. Uh, you pretty much nailed it on the head. <clears throat> it is something that... It was so similar, but so different yep. at the same time for a Star Wars movie. No lightsabers minus Darth Vader at the end. And... God, that is one of the greatest lightsaber scenes oh, we'll ever see. That might even be my uh, yeah. favorite. Just the way it was, oh, it was shot. It's just so brutal. Yeah. It's amazing. 
don't really need to go that much into it. You pretty much nailed it. <clears throat> um, this is where you and I start to differ, and you're going to lose Oh, my, it. do not say what I'm going to think. Oh, I think you're okay. going to say. Do not say it. Number do four, I have episode four. <laughs> A New Hope. Okay. I struggle so hard with these last four that, honestly, it's... I, I hate that we're doing this video because it's so ever changing for mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. that I, I I don't even know it. This honestly changes for me probably by my mood. Every time you watch one, it changes yeah, easily. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's the first Star Wars movie. It's c classic in every way. It's done perfectly. Um, I wish they wouldn't retouch it as much. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if we'll ever see the originals. Hopefully. Uh, well, I mean, Disney did just by Fox, and Fox owned the rights to the originals. But we'll see what happens as far as seeing the original George Lucas edits. I mean, you can't go wrong with the original. No, it's, I God, mean, no. It's, no. It's just, it's classic. That's the only word you can say. Yes. Um, my number three is The Force Awakens. Nice. I freaking love that movie. Yes. I have watched that movie more than I humanly should. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. have caught myself going to bed watching it. Probably, it's li like, I was literally just gonna say it's like a bedtime story. Yeah, it's. Li I've caught myself going to bed watching that movie probably for a week straight. At one point, it is that good. The characters are amazing. Um, it probably also holds a little nostalgia for me that it was so <clears> long <throat> since we had a Star Wars that it just came back with just full force. I, Pun intended. Yes, literally. <laughs> and that, it's just, I love that movie. There's enough, I can't even, ah, there's just the characters, everything. Everyone's, <laughs> that movie is just amazing. But, so, my five was Rogue One, my four is episode four, and my number three was The Force Awakens. So now All right, the nitty gritty. So I kind of, I have a feeling I know what you're going to do, because we've been talking Star Wars for the last oh, month yeah. or so. If, and, I'd be surprised if you um, did. Number two for me, and I, I think Brian knows mine as well, but my number two is episode four, uh, the original Star Wars. Um, yeah, this movie, it is, it's what Star Wars is. It, you know, obviously it introduced us to this entire world, the risk. Um, we've all heard the stories of how everyone involved thought it was going to be an absolute failure, but God. George Lucas was the only one who believed in it, and look what it is. just being those people? That and I was actually, out. I was actually looking up something today, and it is still the it has still made the most money out of all the Star Wars movies. Oh, I'm not surprised. And um, that's just a testament to what it is. I mean, you get Darth Vader with the opening scene. You get uh, Leia and how uh, the re rebellious um, young girl that, or young woman that she was, and you know she wasn't just this female character to throw in the mix or a damsel in distress. Like princess. she was, she was a kick ass character, and she she will always be our princess because of how badass she is. Uh -huh. Obviously, you get Luke and Obi Wan and R two D two and C three PO and Han. Like the introduction of Han in this movie and what he is is just so good. And then you get, um, I mean, just the Empire and you know the the teasing of the Emperor and all of these things in this movie. I mean, Star Wars. Yes, it's my number two, but it is uh, easily one of my all time favorite movies. And then number one that leaves the Empire Strikes Back. The uh, classic. This the is best. this is a the epitome of Star Wars. Uh, Irvin Kershner and what he did for the for the franchise at the time, he twisted it on its tail. And, you know, at first you get Star Wars, it's this fun, energetic, uh, hopeful movie, and then you get this dark, um, gritty uh, take on a Star Wars movie where it leaves us at a horrible place at the end. The good guys are li literally left with the worst thing that could possibly happen, and Han being in Carbonite, the Empire winning, etc. Um, it's so good. I mean, Hoth... You get Hoth, you get Bespin, you get all of these cool things in this movie. Uh, again, this is one of the movies that I can watch on a constant basis and just continue to love and see new things. And you get the introduction of one of my all-time favorite characters in Boba Fett. So oh. there's loving that and everything else in it. So yeah, number two, I got Star Wars. And number one, I have The Empire Strikes Back. All right, so my two <clears throat> leaves me with number two being... The Empire Strikes Back, which That's I what mean, I thought. you're pretty much, uh, you pretty much already knew this, um, which leaves me obviously with number one being The Last Jedi. I honestly feel like I'm still running on a high of, oh, yeah, of The Last sure. Jedi. I can't wait so to see it again. If you ask me in a couple months from now, it might change, but 
as of right now, I have never had so many different like emotions in that Last Jedi movie. I went. I've never been so surprised so many times <laughs> in my life. Well, here, here's an example. So we're sitting in the theater watching this, and at the point in the film where we have the Ray and Kylo scene in the throw room, Brian literally sat up from his chair and yelled, "What the f is going <laughs> on?" I, I. <laughs> Didn't see any of that happening <laughs> for a mile. I, it still blows my mind. I literally just see that slow motion part right where they They're start. They're turning around. Doing, the Praetorian uh, guards are charging. It's, it still blows my mind. I wish I could literally just watch that scene over and over again. Yeah, like a giant gif of that entire scene. Oh, yeah. It'd be but, amazing. But at the same time, I'm talking so much on Last Jedi. Empire Strikes Back is a classic. It is... <laughs> so good from start to finish it never once is like uh, we can fast forward through this part mm-hmm. never once does it hit that and you know i say that last jedi is my favorite but i i don't feel that same way with the last jedi i could easily fast forward through that canto bite scene yep um whereas the empire strikes back it's it's good from start to finish so you know, it's I, like I said, I'm still probably running that high off Last Jedi, um, but I think the thing that just gets me with wanting to put The Last Jedi as number one is the amount of shock and surprise, and yes. I will always the rem- risk. Yes, and I will always remember being in the theater and just every single time something mind blowing happened, just being like shocked and i will always remember that and i think that kind of plays to the feelings of why it's my number one and we didn't even mention but the introduction of yoda in the empire strikes back and oh. how he was involved yeah and freaking yoda showed up in the last jedi yeah I'd exactly ne- you, if, i would have laughed at you if you would have said that he was going to show up <laughs> yeah so uh obviously you can tell that we i mean this is the padawan podcast so we absolutely love these movies but uh, before we get out of here, we're going to run through our 9 through 1 one more time. I'll go ahead and start off. So at number 9... Don't forget I have, to switch. I, I, number 9, I got Attack of the Clones. Number 8, I have The Phantom Menace. Number 7, Return of the Jedi. Number 6, Revenge of the Sith. Number 5, Rogue One. Number 4, The Force Awakens. Number 3, The Last Jedi. Number 2, Star Wars. Number 1, The Empire Strikes Back. I like how you call it Star Wars. And not, I got to go with the original names and on And not these, with man. the new hope. No way. All right, so mine from 9 to 1... I have Return of the Jedi at nine. The uh, Attack of the Clones. I keep wanting to call it the Clone Wars because I'm watching. It's so the Clone similar. Wars. Yeah. Uh, number eight as Attack of the Clones. Number seven being the Phantom Menace. Number six being Revenge of the Sith. Number five being Rogue One. Number four being Star Wars: A New Hope. Number three, The Force Awakens. Two is Episode Five: Empire Strikes Back. And number one, currently not forever, The Last Jedi. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us on the Padawan Podcast today. That is our complete Star Wars franchise ranking. Um, Again, these will be ever-changing, and uh, with Han Solo coming out in May, we may jump back on and do this once more, just adding that in there at some point. Uh, Can't wait to see where that lands. I know, seriously, with all of these movies. Um, Regarding the Padawan, look out for this on a uh, bi-weekly basis. There's not a ton of Star Wars stuff going on with The Last Jedi in theaters right now, but with Han Solo coming out in May... There's bound to be some stuff, and we're going to try and keep up to date on everything Han Solo as well as canon and just talk more Star Wars. And as you can tell, it is audio. gives us a little bit more relaxed feel for us and for you guys as well. Again, thank you for joining us. Brian, thank you for joining me. No problem. And until next time, may the Force be with you.